I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. <laughs> Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Today we are going to have halal fun as usual. It's halal always to make fun of stupidity. However, it can be very costly because stupidity brings other stupid action, which is terrorism. Uh, yesterday or uh, uh, 24 hours ago almost, uh, we have a Mohammedan from India. He grew a long beard, and he is studying study Islam in one topic just to refute me, you know. And then he called me, and a disaster happened as usual. You know, things happen. But I don't really care about this person. I feel sorry for him. Today our topic is the same, but with some questions, which is very important. If you remember when this guy, he called me, he said the following, just to refresh your memory. Anyone? He will call me and uh, we will see. It is Skype is dead. Move the video a little bit. Okay. Here we go. Okay, actually, I'm calling you today for something I saw in your video from last week live. All right. And not about what you're talking right but now. Can, can we talk about this black stone first, and then we go there, if you don't mind? I don't have expertise on the subject. You don't have any, any what? Expertise on this particular subject. Why aren't you a Muslim? Yes, I am a Muslim. I'm calling particularly okay. did, did about Al Qaeda. The black stone. Again, I did not. I do not have expertise on this particular exactly. subject. Exactly. I'm saying so. Why you are not? So how come you are expert about a, a different story, but you are not expert in this story? What happened? You are growing your beard for no reason. Listen, you asked me if any Abdul who is confident or who is brave right. to call whether so, it is at okay, whatever but, level so of let knowledge us make, he let has. Let's make it simple. Have you ever heard, I will go to your, your topic, the one you chose, no problem. But have you ever heard that Muslims Day and your prophet kissed the black stone? I do not want to talk about that. Can Why? you respect that? Just give me a few, uh, uh, you know, few, uh, one minute from your time, your uh, crisis time, you know, like just one minute. Do you, what do you think about this? Give me any answer. You, you think it's right. Why your prophet kissed the black stone? Well, if I give you any information that's not appropriate, I will be held accountable well, for that. I do not want to be held accountable. Man. You are a growing yes, man. Yes. This is the problem with Mohammedans. They're afraid to say even their opinion about their belief. They will be held accountable. Well, what does that mean? He's terrified. So he want to talk only about specific thing. He knew now he is sure from the answer. The other one can cause him trouble. He can give an answer that can be a problem later. Islam is savage religion 
what what will happen to you if you let us say you gave a wrong answer but anyway uh, he insists and he is why he insists because he studied that case only specifically today for me yes yes okay. yes so yes listen, I listen. To give here's, me a, here's the reason of a growing man he, okay here, here's the reason i want to talk to you about okay mm. the quran says i invite you to the way with certain knowledge with knowledge of certainty i'm okay. not very certain about the questions that you're raising this week but mm. i have done my homework for the subject on the subject of al-kidhra and i would like to address that yeah, but do you, you feel that it's fair for no, us to no, discuss no problem that? no problem but you just said to me there's a verse in the quran saying you should not believe in something is not certainty no i said i invite no he said the quran says he said the quran says you see the second this is why muslims they prefer to speak to somebody else because anything they will say is going to be used against them he just said the Quran says don't believe in things without certainty, whatever, blah 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 blah. And then I ask him, the Quran says that where you know suddenly he denied it, he did not say that. He just he you just said that a second ago. This is why the Muhammadan they enjoy talking to others, but they don't enjoy talking to me because with others they can put all the garbage you want. And the Christians in the other side is not even listening, you know. You need to listen carefully to what they say. It's not just to give him the microphone and the guy he keep talking for 20 10 minutes and now 10 minutes for me. He says something. So, what is that? Continue. Yeah? I invite you yeah. with the knowledge of certainty. So when I've come here inviting you oh, and okay. everyone so, who's so watching. So you have the knowledge of uh, certainty. Okay, what is that? Go ahead. With respect to Al-Khidr in last week video, All right. I said, you said a few things that were quite um, offensive, but keeping the offensive side, no, there were a the few offensive. things that give were logical. Offensive. No problem. We are here. We give you freedom, my friend. My friend to, to that's say that's all right. Let me, allow, allow me, do not interrupt me. Allow me to state what I want to state, hmm. and then we can discuss about the other things as well. Okay. So with respect to what was logical is that you did raise a few logical questions as to why does Quran, which says that you should not kill an innocent, mm -hmm. allow Khidr to kill, and why didn't Moses, who should have done something about it, didn't do anything about it? Okay. This you pointed out as a clear contradiction in the Quran. Okay. And that um, you raised a few questions about why was the innocent child killed, and that the Quran teaches killing innocent children. I lost you. Yes? You said that uh, Quran teaches killing innocent children. Mm, that okay. was your accusation against the Quran. All right. This is referring to Al Kahf, chapter 18, verse 74, that okay. you referred back then, and you even pointed out to the verse where Musa, peace be upon him, mm. was questioning Al Khidr. All right. About killing the child. So, so before. Uh, we move into the context. This is your claim that um, Al Khidr kill an, killed an innocent child, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that Quran allows you to or teaches you to ch kill innocent children. All right. And Musa, being a Muslim, Al Khidr being a Muslim, mm -hmm. and the child being a Muslim, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and Musa didn't do anything about it, mm -hmm. while he should have done something about it, being the prophet and everything. So. Um, I want to take, uh, back then you even uh, kind of dismissed a lot of things that I could have talked about. So I did a little bit of research. So here's here's what I would like you to know. And all those who are listening, this is in context, Surah Al-Kahf in the Quran, chapter 18, verse 65 to 82. This is the entire context. What you picked was one verse, which was verse 74, just to show that Musa was questioning someone mm. that he killed somebody. Okay. So looking at the context, Looking uh -huh. at the context, uh -huh. let's first understand that this context is talking about Musa, who, who was being corrected by uh, Musa alayhi salam, peace be upon him, being corrected for something he claimed when mm. he was giving a speech to his people, Bani Israel. They asked him a question, who is the most knowledgeable among the people? And he mm. said, I am 
the most knowledgeable among the people. Reference, Jami at Tirbidi, Hadith number 3149. You can look it up. If you want, you can do that now. You can I do that later. I know it by heart. Okay. Great. And then Allah hmm. said to Prophet uh, Moses that you should have attributed that knowledge to Allah. There are people who are more knowledgeable than you. So al Khidra was the person whom he pointed out to, to take the lesson. And when he, he wanted to find out how he can meet, he was given a detail in description. Okay, listen to this, guys. Hmm. Musa is the prophet of Allah, supposedly. You see, Muhammad is a fraud. He lived with the Jews. Suddenly, Musa became a, became a prophet for, uh, in, his, in his agenda. He lived with the Christians. Suddenly, Isa became a prophet in his agenda. He lived with the Sabian, the Sabian prophets and gods. They became his gods in his agenda. This guy is like Obama. He is a Jew with the Jew. He's a Muslim with the Muslim. He's a Christian with a Christian. In the same time, he is an atheist with the atheist. And he is a homosexual with the homosexual. He is a straight with the straight. Muhammad is no different. So, Muhammad is a fool who heard the stories. Those are stories the Jews they tell to their children. And they are not even... It's, it, the story is not even like that. Uh, Muhammad, he mixed between two stories. One about a person, his name is Gilgamesh. And the other one is about a person, his name is Musa. And none of them is true. Both his stories are fictions. And as usual, Muhammad, he take any stories, he like it, he put it in his book, and he claimed that Allah is the one who told him the story. If we look at the story, as this gentleman, he said, Musa, he said, I am the most knowledgeable. Allah, he got him busted. He says, no, you are not. You are not. Okay, who? He said to him, there is a person, his name is Al-Khudr. And now it's time to send you to school. Allah decided to send Al-Khudr, sorry, Musa, to school. So he can learn from Al Khadr. That's what this guy he said to us. Think carefully again. I've done something about it, being the prophet and everything. So um, let, I want to take I, back then. You even uh, kind of dismissed a lot of things that I could have talked about. So I did a little bit of research. So here's here's what I would like you to know, and all those who are listening, this is in context. Surah Al Kahf in Quran, chapter 18, verse 65 to 82. This is the entire context. What you picked was one verse, which was verse 74, just to show that Musa was questioning someone mm. that he killed somebody. Okay. So looking at the context, looking right. at the context, uh -huh. let's first understand that this context is talking about Musa, who was being corrected by uh, Musa, salam, peace be upon him, being corrected for something he claimed. When mm. he was giving a speech to his people, Bani Israel, they asked him a question, who is the most knowledgeable among the people? And he mm. said, I am the most knowledgeable among the people. Reference, Jami at tirbidi Hadith number 3149. You can look it up. If you want, you can do that now. You can I do that later. I know it by heart. Okay. Great. And then Allah mm. said to Prophet uh, Moses that you should have attributed that knowledge to Allah there are people who are more knowledgeable than you. So al Khidra was the person whom he pointed out to, to take the lesson. And when he, he wanted to find out how he can meet, he was given a detail in description. Mm -hmm. The description, mm -hmm. which, in, which involves certain particular specific instructions that he should carry a fish. And when the like fish what? disappears, that like what? he should carry a fish in a okay. basket. Uh -huh. And where the fish will disappear, at, right. at a point where the waters meet, okay. you will find uh, you will find the person whom you want to talk to. So when the, when the fish will touch the fountain of youth or the fountain of life, okay. the fish will come uh -huh. to life, right? See, you are adding something yeah. to my context. Let me give you the context, and we can discuss about this this thing as well. Because we're talking about verse sixty-five to eighty-two. That's that's a big context. Yeah, but you are the one we're... who mentioned hadith, right? It's you who mentioned hadith. Yes. So we can share hadith yes. at the same time, correct? So as long as yes. you mention hadith, I can share hadith. So yes. you said uh, he gave him gave him a sign that you carry with you a fish, but you did not tell us what will happen to the fish. Is the fish going to go to, to come to life? The hadith specifies that yeah. where the fish disappears is where you will find the, the person. 
that okay, you're, but you're the, seeking. Does the fish cut, uh, touch the fountain of, uh, of life, water, and come back to life? See, hadith, it means whatever the prophet said. I know okay, what hadith is, my friend. Why you yes, are trying yes, to yes. See, re see, see. rephrase? I'm asking you. You, you, so you asked me a fish, question, I'm the, answering. The fish, you the fish come back to life. To answer it How properly. the fish will come back? All right, we will stop here. And I will open my Skype to give a chance to the Muslims to call us and tell us why Allah he sent Musa to school and what Musa he earned from that. Because you will see how stupid this religion is. And the reason we want Muslims to call us Mohammedans, and I want somebody he knows the topic very well, the smartest between you Muslims, Mohammedan. I challenge any Muhammadan to tell us is this a story is a smart story or made by a fool is it a smart story or a story made by a foolish person actually Mr. Imran I see him right now he is in in, uh, in uh, Skype he can call me if he's listening I don't know Any Muslim can tell us what exactly Musa's learned from this? Let us see if Mr. Amran will call. Any Mohammedan? Somebody asking me, what do you think about the Mormon? The Mormon are cult like Muhammad. Why you want to be confused? It's exactly the same garbage. A guy, angels, they came to him, nobody saw them, they gave him a book, he translated the book and he gave them back the book. <laughs> I'm confused. Well, if you are confused, it's that's mean you you have no you 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 are not Christian. A true Christian will not be confused about such a silly cult like the Mormon or Muhammadan. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us? What exactly Musa has learned from this school? Allah, he sent Musa to school. What he learned? Waiting for any Muhammadan to tell us, let us go to the Quran. The yellow pages of Muhammad. We will notice here <coughs> the story of Al Khadr. The, the chapter, or the cave chapter, by the way, Al Kahf, is the, one of the most fantastic chapters in the Quran because it is the easiest way to prove Islam to be the most stupid cult fabricated stories ever. Let us open the chapter. When this guy, he called me, he said that I did not show the whole story because the whole story, you can, you know, the whole story is stupid anyway, but the most important part of it is getting the child, making a hole in the boat is not really important as getting a child. He's a Muslim child. So, you know, when Allah He sent Musa to find Al Khadr, the first question you ask yourself: Where is Al Khadr? And if you read the Quran. And this is the chapter 18 in front of us. You will find that the story has no contradiction, no, no, no introduction. Suddenly, the Quran talking about something weird. You can read it from the beginning to the end. Suddenly, nothing perverted, uh, pre prevented men from believing 
now when guidance came has came to them okay and from asking forgiveness okay except the ways of the ancient be repeated to them but isn't it this is a fabulous story from the ancient and then he says and we send not messengers except as a giver of a glad tidings so why Muhammad want to slaughter everybody is that a glad tidings I'm going to kill you and warners Muhammad was not warning Muhammad he give you three days you convert or you die but those who disbelieve dispute with false argument okay how our argument is false and then you read the story you know anyway a false argument, guys, the sperm come from the backbone of the man. Is that a false argument? This is the argument of who? We have a God, his name is Allah. He says the sperm come from the backbone. Christian prince laugh at it. Who is the one making false argument? We have a book that says women have a sperm coming from their ribs, from the location of the necklace specifically. Quran accused that to be a false argument. Christian prince, he laugh at this answer the sunset in murky water the muslim they try to fix it they say it appears it sounds like it's a you know but it's not allah saying no it's allah saying you are a liar and muhammad confirmed it in the hadith duct tape religion they try to fix it so false argument but they cannot refute the argument this is how false it is and then you read the verse after it This guy, he said to us, the story starts from verse number 56. Where is 56? There's no 56. I mean, there's, no, there's nothing about Musa's here. Okay, we go to 57. There's nothing about Musa's here. Okay, we go to the number uh, 58. There's... <laughs> there's nothing about Musa's there. <laughs> and then suddenly, you know, and here he says, and those towns, uh, you know, like, etc. he don't even tell us which town. Muslims, they have to add it between two brackets. We destroy them when they did wrong. Okay. Uh, but Muslims do not know where those towns are. It's just names. And then remember, suddenly, here we go. Remember. Okay, how do they remember? Uh, do, do those people know the story? Did anyone heard this story before? Yes, remember, that's why he's saying, remember, it's an ancient story, it's a fabulous story, it's a, it's a fiction story, it's a, it's, a, it's a kid's story. And remember when Moses said to his servant, I will not give up until I reach the junctions of the two seas. Okay, well, hold on, so what is, well, when, this, when the journey started? <laughs> it's like, you know, going to the movie in the middle of it. And then they start the movie with saying, Musa is saying to his servant, I will not give up. I need to find the junctions of the two seas. Like, so didn't we know who is this person first and where they are going? And where is the story? The guy, he told us that uh, Musa, he made a speech. And then uh, one person uh, asked him, well, who are you? you, know, are you uh, who is the most knowledgeable? Are you the most knowledgeable? He said, yes, I am the most knowledgeable. What is the story? The Quran dropped to the middle of the story. This is why when, uh, when some, uh, some Abduls, they say, when some Abduls, they say, we can follow the Quran only. Yeah, sorry guys, the scream was not, uh, but anyway, here we go, this is, this is verse number 56. There's nothing there about Moses. This is verse number 57. There's nothing about Moses. This is the one talk about they didn't accept because of their uh, argument, false argument, as you see. <laughs> and this is 57, nothing about Moses. And this is 58, nothing about Moses. And this is 59, there's nothing about Moses. And then suddenly, I remember when Moses said to his servant, Muhammad, he started the movie from the end. What is the story?
Are we following people? If Allah is telling us the story, shouldn't he tell the story? What is the story? Suddenly, the director of the Hollywood movie, it's like an Indian movie, you know, starts suddenly uh, two people singing, hey, hey, ah, la, 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 and then 10,000 appear from the middle of nowhere. This is Indian movie. You didn't tell us what happened. What is the conversation the guy was telling us in the video that Musa, uh, he said, I am the most knowledgeable and Allah wanted to correct him. So he said to him, no, there is somebody. Shouldn't this be in the, in the Quran? How come only this part in the Quran? And how we will understand now what happened? Why Musa is now looking for two seas? And what, what two seas is that? The junctions of the two seas, find it. What junctions of the two seas? And then you go trying to find the junctions of the two seas, just to show you the stupidity of the religion. If we ask the Muhammad now, where is the location of the junctions of the two seas? The one Musa is looking for. Because there's many junctions. Is that Panama? Where, where is that? Is that the Red Sea? What junctions of two seas? What does that mean? Is that Constantinia? The Black Sea and the Mediterranean Sea? Is that the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea? Is that the Persian Sea? And what, 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 what so we go to the interpretation, you will see the Muslims are putting their finger in their mouth and they are sucking it, trying to find out where is the place place. So how Moses was able to find out? Now we have satellite. If you say to me, go and find Al Khadr, okay, I will find Al Khadr when you take with you a fish. This is what the guy he said to us take with you a fish. He did not even give him direction, he did not give him an address, he did not give him a name of a city. He says, go and find Al Khadr. Okay, how we will find Al Khadr? Take with you a fish. Uh huh. So if you want to go, let us go to the video, hold on. Where we will find the location? Take with you a fish. What the heck? So I can go in direction, does any direction, does not matter? Yes, just take with you a fish. And by the way, it's not a fish, it's a wheel. Back to life, because this is how they will know the location, correct? You are not allowing me to answer. When no, I'm trying to answer- conversation, consider yourself- The funny, the funny- The fountain of life. All this time he is talking, and now he is saying you are not allowing me to answer. The second you say a statement, the Muslim, they, they, he cry, he say, you are not allowing me to answer, or you are not answering. Life, okay. the fish will come uh -huh. to life, right? See, you are adding something yeah. to my context. Let me give you the context and we can discuss about this, this thing as well, because we're talking about verse 65 to 82. That's, that's a big yeah, context. You are the one who mentioned hadith, right? It's you who mentioned hadith. Yes. So we can share hadith at yes. the same time, correct? So as long as yes. you mention hadith, I can share hadith. So yes. you said uh, he gave him, gave him a sign that you carry with you a fish, but you did not tell us what will happen to the fish. Is the fish going to go to, to come to life? The hadith specifies that yeah. where the fish disappears is where you will find the, the person okay, that you, but you're does, seeking. Does the fish cut, uh, touch the fountain of, uh, of life, water? Become... So how you find the direction? This is a prophet of God sent by God for a mission. And now just walk. Walk where? Walk in direction of Europe, direction of Africa, or direction of Asia. Where? Because remember, Musa is in the middle of the Middle East. So he can just go to the north. He is going to go to Europe. Go to the south. He is going to Africa. Go into the east. He can keep going until he go to China. So where he will go? Oh, just take a fish with you. Look, at uh, this is school. How we find the school? Take a fish with us. And that is a whale. It is a wheel. Back to life. See, hadith, it means whatever the prophet said. 
I know okay, what Hanif is, my friend. Why you yes, are trying yes, to yes. See, re see, see. rephrase? I'm asking you. You, you, so you asked me a fish, question, I'm the, answering. The fish, you should the allow fish me come the back to life. To answer it how properly. the fish will come back to life? Because this is how they will know the location, correct? You are not allowing me to answer. When no, I'm trying to answer... Conversation. So... Consider yourself First drinking, all... drinking coffee with me. We don't want to jump okay. over things. We want people to have full understanding. I'm sorry, what's your quoting. name? What's your name? Christian. Okay. And this is what is sometimes is really silly. A person, he called you and he was watching your videos for a century and he knew your name, a Christian Prince, and then he asked you, what's your name? Like I'm talking to who? Uh, oh, okay, I forgot. Yeah, this is Muhammad. He was bewitched. Now he remember, what's, what's your name? Okay, well, Christian. Yeah. You didn't, first of all, you didn't allow me to give me, give the context. I was... All this talk, I did not give him the chance to give the context. He told us about who a person, he told him, are you the most knowledgeable? Allah told him, oh, the whole story, and I'm not telling him, I'm not giving him a chance. I was hoping that you would have no, you'd respect me I want you to give full give... context, I want you to give yes. a full, full coverage of the story, so people will know, yes. as long as we started from where, me... from the beginning, etc. So I'm asking you, Allah, if you gave interrupt... him the sign, my friend, I like, I like listen, to go listen. over details. Listen. Does it hurt you? Does it hurt you? To be honest, I mean, be honest with me. Does it hurt you to give us more details? So, Allah, he told you're, them to carry a fish. See, okay, what the what fish will do? Tell us what the fish will do. What you're doing is you're interrupting me. I'm and not, you're I'm not. You, I, I want you to see, give us the whole story, not you, a part of the story. So, you haven't, Allah, yes. he told, did you mention to me that Allah, he told them, carry with you a fish? Did you mention that? Yes. Okay, what the fish will do? Go ahead. Where the fish disappears, he will okay, find how the, the fish will disappear. How the fish will disappear is not a, not something that is given to him as a sign. The sign that's given is no, no, where the fish you, will disappear. See, they will not answer. That's why they fear they fear to, to, to call me because every single question count and it's very serious. How the fish will disappear? It's not how the fish disappear is a sign. Is the fish disappearing because how the fish will disappear? We have a dead fish. It's not a fish, it's a wheel, again. In a basket. I never heard of somebody, a Musa must be a giant to carry a wheel in a basket. And the sign is, it's not important. The, the sign is the fish disappearing. And how disappear is not important. No, it's, it's important. You don't want to talk about it because it's embarrassment. Muhammad was teaching people that there's a fountain of youth, a fountain of life. And this is how people come back to life. Until now we have zero Muslim trying to contact us in Skype. All right? They are afraid, I understand. So there is a fish. Okay, take with you a wheel. This is what it says in Arabic. But the story started with saying, where the Qala Musa doesn't say remember by the way, and when Musa said, even the word not remember is not there. When Musa said to his servant, where is the word boy? But uh, is young. Anyway, I will not give you up. Okay, until I reach the junctions of the two seas. But where Allah, he said to him, go to this direction and the junctions of the two seas. They will say to you, that can be found in the Hadith. So why is in the Quran? Why the story is cut off in the Quran? Maybe the goat ate that part? Because obviously here the story is cut off. Those guys are already, obviously, traveling for a long, long period to the point, Musa is saying, I'm not going to give up. You say that, when you are really, at least somebody, somebody with you is giving up, like it's, we, we don't find it. You don't say I'm not going to give up unless you suffer from finding what you are looking for. So I will not give up until I reach the junctions of the two seas. Okay. Even if I spend years and years of traveling, so here we notice that Musa's 
is a messenger of God and he is a leader of his nation. And now Musa is going camping and hiking, looking for knowledge. Sad guru, the one who speaks too much, he say nothing. It is time to send Musa to learn so he can be a guru. Guru Musa is going to learn from Guru Al Khadr. And Guru Al Khadr is nowhere to be found. Allah did not give Muhammad and uh, 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 Musa an address. The only thing he knew that he need to take with him a wheel. And when the wheel escape, how the wheel will escape? They don't want to talk about it because it's embarrassment. Let us go to the hadith so we can laugh. This is the story here. This is the story this Abdul he was reading for us from. This is what he studied, you know? Like he took him to some time to study and he was now like focus, right? So, uh, it was said to him, keep a salted fish. It's a salted fish. But in Arabic it says, hootan malihan, which means salted wheel, not a fish. Then, take with you salted fish. Okay, who said that to him? Thereupon he said, My Lord, direct, direct me to him. It was said to him, supposedly Allah talking, keep us salted, oh, we will go with the fish for now, as a provision for your journey. So the salted fish is to eat it. Okay. The place where that fish would be lost, you will find that man. Look at this amazing story. You take with you a fish, take with you a sardine. When the sardine disappeared, the man is there. So he set forth where? Okay, well, take with you a fish to where? I mean, who is the crazy here? At least say to him, go north. At least say to him, go south. Just walk and take with you a fish. Dead fish? Shouldn't you say, go to uh, uh, Morocco, go to Egypt, go to uh, uh, Saudi Arabia at that time, the Arabian Peninsula, anyway, you just go where he will go with the fish? Anyway, just take a fish. So he set forth, and a young slave along with him, until they came to the place, uh, There's a rock. I mean, look at this translation here. I mean, this this idiot who translated the the thing, he think this is a name, Sahra. Sahra is a is a rock. Why you don't translate? But this is a Sahra, where supposedly something will happen there. But he did not find any clue, so he proceeded on and left that young man there. Okay, the fish began to stare in water, and the water was assumed the form of an arc over the fish. So what? What is that? What? Any Muhammadan can tell us what's going in? What's going on? Assume like what? And uh, so the fish began to stir in water, and that and the water assumed the form of an arc over the fish. Mm -hmm. Where is the water coming from? What the story here saying? They arrived to a rock. 
You did not find any clue. Where is the water coming from? Suddenly, you just put water there. And now the, the fish is swimming in the water. Hmm. Continue. The young man said, I should meet Allah Apostle and inform him. But he was made to forget. Look at this drama. Allah made him forget. Maybe not Allah, maybe Shaitan. We will see later. Which is the same. And when they had gone beyond, and look, guys, look at this story. The, the dead fish or the dead whale start moving. The servant, he decided to tell his master, well, I should tell my master the fish is moving. He forgot. I mean, this is happening every day that we have a dead whale for, for maybe a year or maybe a month or maybe a week. And then it start moving. He forgot to tell. I mean, they are together next to each other in a trap. What do you mean he made to be forgotten? This story is not even good for kids. This is the servant, and this is his master, and they are in a journey, and they are together in the same place. It's not like the guy in his bedroom. How he forgot? He was made to forget, brother. He was made. Allahu Akbar. Okay? So he saw the, the, the fish moving, brother, and he made to be for, uh, forget to tell him. Okay. Conspiracy theory. He Musa said to the young man, bring breakfast. Like, what the heck? Bring breakfast? It was morning then. Finally, there's some information. It was morning. So they spent the whole night there. We have been exhausted because of the journey. And Musa was not exhausted until he had crossed that Particular place. Look at this guy. Is how much energy he have. When he arrived there, he felt exhausted. Allah want him to to settle down there. The destiny. So, uh, until he arrived there to meet Al Khudr, and then the youth was reminded and said, "Didn't you see? As we reach the Sahra, which means the rock, I forgot the fish." What the heck? He forgot the fish. But look what happened. Moses is asking the guy to prepare a breakfast. Moses want to eat the fish, which Allah told him, keep it until you lose it. So Moses is breaking the command of Allah. He want to eat the only GBS he has. Allah gave him a GBS. It is the dead fish. Moses now is angry. He want to eat the GBS. And this is why the servant, he remember, oh, I forgot to tell you, the, <clears throat> yeah, the breakfast is gone. What? The breakfast, the fish. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, uh. But why Moses want to eat the breakfast of the, the fish, which is Allah has signed for him? Is it, this is the GBS, the only way to find the guy? He want to eat it. What an idiot. So he said, uh, you know, when we arrived to the Sakhra, which means the, the rock, I forgot the fish, and Satan, Satan alone, who was made me uh, forgotful, forgotful, I like this word, forgotful, of it, Shaitan, it was Shaitan, brother. It looked like destiny controlled by, not by Allah, only controlled by Shaitan. Isn't it you, Muslim, you say that everything happened to you, done to you, is made by Allah? So how Shaitan made him forgot? I will, I will tell you. Allah make shaitan make you forget. Ah, oh. oh. okay. Yeah, crazy glue. It was, it was, it is strange that he has been able to find the way to the ocean too. Look, how he knew this? The guy, he lost the fish. How he knew now that the fish is in the ocean and find his way to the ocean? So suddenly there is water. And then suddenly there's an ocean. He said, this is what we sought for us. Then they return retracting the, their steps. And then the companion, he pointed to him the location where the fish had been lost. 